and that will allow you to send your message directly to someone who will receive it and get back to you promptly. Of course, we also have phone um, support, which is at our standard Environment Hamilton phone number, and those phones are being monitored this evening. So our volunteer tech team of staff and board members will be able to assist you and get you through any technical difficulties you might have. So with that, we're going to move into our actual meeting now, and uh, hopefully the medium will serve us well for the rest of the night. So, uh, the annual general meeting of Environment Hamilton called for 7 p.m. on October 5th, 2020, in this virtual venue hosted by Zoom, is hereby called to order. Is there a motion to appoint a chairperson and a secretary for this meeting? I think we're just waiting on a mover and a seconder to move that uh, I would be made chair of the meeting. I see the poll up, but I'm uh, unable to see the chat. Can somebody unmute and tell me if there's been a mover and a seconder? Yes, there have been, Cindy. Um, we've got, um, sorry, there are a number of them. Pascal Marchand moves, uh, Ryan McGreal seconds. Excellent. So. Having that moved and seconded, I will now put it to a vote. So it, here's the motion to approve uh, myself, Cindy Gangaram, as chairperson and Ron Ballantyne as secretary for the annual general meeting. You can go ahead and take a moment now and click in your choice there. <clears throat> so the votes are coming in. I think we have enough. So I'm going to end the poll. Okay, thank you. So then um, we will call that carried. And uh, we see that uh, um, I will be the chairperson for the evening and Ron Ballantyne will be our recording secretary. So thank you. Notice having been given to all members by letter or phone and there being at least 20 members present, I declare the annual meeting duly constituted. I'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement this evening. As a settler, I will begin by acknowledging the land upon which we are gathered, well, which we are gathered virtually for this meeting is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is directly adjacent to the Haldeman Tract, six miles on each side of the Grand River that was returned to the Six Nations of the Grand River by the Haldeman Treaty of 17. 84 territory of southern Ontario is subject is the subject of the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant an agreement between the Haudenosaunee the Anishinaabe and the Mississaugas that bound them to peacefully share the territory and protect the land the single spoon reflects the need to share and to ensure the bowl is never empty this refers to taking care of the land and the creatures we share it with there are no knives indicating the need to protect and share in peace Subsequent Indigenous nations and other peoples were invited into this covenant in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. So most of us, including myself, are non-Indigenous settler colonizers. And thus far, we have, not been <clears throat> we have not done very well at sharing or protecting the territory. I encourage the settlers here to reflect on this and do better in the future. We will begin our business portion of the evening by approving the minutes of the last annual general meeting, which were distributed via an email blast to all members. So uh, I'll start off by asking for a first a mover and a seconder uh, to approve the minutes of the last annual general meeting that was held on April 8th, 2019. Moved by Dave Carson, seconded by Jim Quinn. Excellent. So, um, Oh, I've just lost my place. So there's a motion then, and we're just going to see that screen as a poll. So there in front of you is motion number two for the evening, the motion to approve the minutes from the last annual general meeting that was held on, um, I think we need to make a correction there. I believe it was April 8th. Do you want Accepting. Accepting of the date will be correct on the original minutes. Please okay. vote if you approve the minutes. Yes, no, or abstain.
So we have a lot of people voting. So I think I'll end the poll. Okay, so we have a few people who have abstained, but 84% that does that motion does carry. So the last uh, the minutes are now approved from our last annual general meeting. Thank you. So at this time, I'm going to call on our treasurer, Dave Carson, to present the financial report for the fiscal year that ended December 31st, 2019. Dave? Dave, I'm not sure if you're muted, but we don't hear you. He, he does appear to be muted on my list here. Try now, Dave. I'm unmuted. I'm seeing a very small screen there, just hold on. So Cindy, um, good, good evening everybody. Um, these are the audited results for the calendar year 2019. So you're seeing them quite late because we usually have our AGM in April. That was of course deferred. Our books are professionally audited by the firm of Bettinelli Mastro, Mastro Luisi, and a full copy of the audit is available. If you would like to see it, uh, just send an email to Linda Lukasik. Next slide, please. Uh, no, the one before that, Cindy, please. That's it, thank you. So this is a high level view of our income and expenses. And we always manage this under three headings, which you can see here in the three columns. The general fund is where we place unrestricted donations and administrative income and where we pay non-project expenses like rent, insurance, utilities, and administrative salaries. The projects fund is our main area with grants, uh, with, with grant funding which is directed to specific aims according to the uh, donors of the grants. Almost all the expenses are star salaries, with one exception in the good food box, which has uh, product purchases and box sales. And finally, the environmental justice fund, that third column, is the balance of the fine that was paid by the city for our case regarding the old Rennie landfill back in, uh, I think, the year 2000. Technically, Linda was the donor, and the agreement is that these funds would be used to support advocacy, environmental rights, the cost to do environmental sampling, and retain experts where needed. And so we haven't touched any of that in the past year. So the revenue expense and the carried forward amounts are shown here. You can see that revenue was down a little from last year as a result of fewer grants. But we managed our expenses in line with this and we still have an amount carried forward into 2020. It was less, reflecting fewer grants. Send you the next slide, please. This breaks down our revenue and expense to give you an idea of the source of our funds and where we spend them. The top two charts are for the general fund. You can see half of our revenue comes from donations which are used to keep the lights on and pay rent and insurance. And some basic administrative costs which include the vital work of grant writing. For projects, you see that most revenue comes from grants, including the brought forward amount from the previous year, which were grants which we hadn't fully spent in 2018. There's a small amount from donations. Uh, in this case, they were directed towards our climate work. As I mentioned before, there are produce purchases for the food box sales. 
All of these are much more detailed in our, in our audited account, of course. The next slide, please, Cindy. This is a summary then of, of uh, our assets and liabilities. It basically reflects the cash we hold from grants to carry forward into the current year. If we have unpaid bills or receipts, they're shown by the auditor under accounts receivable or accounts payable. And the environmental justice account reflects much of the cash at the year end, you'll see. Almost half our cash is uh, just what we have in the environmental justice fund, which we don't use for day-to-day -day work. Uh, next slide, please, Cindy. Uh, this, I thought, because we're so far into the year, I thought I'd give you a, a snapshot of where we were to the end of August. We're so far through 2020. The general fund reflects the usual rent, utilities, insurance, but in addition this year, it's where we have put the COVID Canada emergency wage supplement income, which we have received, and the expenses related to that. We continue to get grant funding, though we have a concern that it is less than last year. Even with the applications outstanding at this time, our grant revenues are unlikely to reach last year's reduced total. We do have enough to cover our staff until the end of the year, but carried forward amounts to support 2021 work look likely to be lower at this time. Which then brings me to my last slide, which is to point out that there's still time to contribute to our summer fundraiser. The, the time has been extended, and if you do contribute, you'll see the link there. Please make a note, it's our main web, our main web page. This does come at this time with a tax receipt from the um, small change fund. So that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I don't know, Robin, whether you want to ask questions now, if there are any. Uh, there was one question in the question and answer, and it was from Jim, and he asked, doesn't the general fund also go towards advocacy? And I said, I believe so, but is that correct, Dave? Um, it's probably better answered by Linda, but to a small extent, uh, Linda's work uh, where it's not funded by projects would normally come out of uh, general administration. So there is some, uh, obviously, advocacy work that Linda does, that's the case. Okay, thank you. So I think you can continue, Dave. Well, I, I'm at an end now. It's, uh, it's up to Cindy to take control back again. Okay. Well, I was waiting on you to make a motion there, Dave. So um, I was thinking that you might want to nominate a certain Petinelli and Master Luisi chartered accountants to perform an audit for this corporation for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2019. Uh, that is my first motion. It's yes, to... Go ahead to uh, re-engage our auditors for the next year. At a re I'm just gonna finish that. At a remuneration to be fixed by the board of directors and the board is hereby authorized to fix such remuneration. So uh, that is the motion that uh, our treasurer, Dave Carson is putting forth. So um, looking for a seconder. So Dave is moving this as a member of Environment Hamilton and we just need a seconder. Don, oh, Don McLean. Thank you. Okay, so we have a seconded motion. And so now we're going to screen the poll. So there is our motion to accept Petinelli and Master Luisi chartered accountants to perform an audit for this corporation for fiscal year ending December 31st, 2020, at a remuneration to be fixed by the board of directors and the board is hereby authorized to fix such remuneration. So we can go ahead and yes, no, or abstain and I'll give everyone a moment to do that. So we're at 95%, so I'll end the poll and share the results. Super. Okay, and, and my, so with that result being on the second, screen. My second motion was to accept the treasurer's report. Right. Okay. 
So our first motion is carried. And um, were we to have a second motion to accept the treasurer's report? Yes. Okay, so at this time, um, I, Dave Carson moves that we accept the treasurer's report. Is there a second? Yes, we yes. have. Okay. Jim Quinn seconds. Thank you, Jim Quinn seconds, excellent. So now we're just voting on a motion to accept the treasurer's report. And again, the poll is screened. If you'll just take a moment and vote. So that's good. I'll end the poll, share the results. Super. Okay, and so seeing that result, that motion is carried. So we've carried uh, both the treasurer's motions and I thank the treasurer for both uh, a year of service and for this thorough report. Um, so at this point, we are um, moving forward in our program to my absolute favorite part of the evening. I'd like to invite our brilliant and tireless executive director, Linda Lukasik, to present a vision along with the staff to present a visual review of Environment Hamilton's activities. Um, so Linda, you'll start followed by the other staff. Linda, I'll hand it over to you. Great, thank you so much, Cindy. Um, hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, it's great to be together, even though it has to be virtually. Um, you're not going to be surprised to hear me say that EH has had a challenging time since our last AGM, which was hard to believe it was well over a year ago. Um, the pandemic has really turned things upside down. Uh, but despite this, because we're a persistent bunch, as you will hear from our presentations, EH staff are continuing to push ahead, um, adapting and innovating as we go. We're continuing with the important work of the organization and planning to unroll pub really important public education and advocacy efforts in the coming months. And we'll share more about that tonight. And as always, I want to express my deep appreciation for our staff and their passion and dedication to the work of the organization. And this year too, on behalf of the staff team, I want to thank our board of directors especially our outgoing board members, Cindy, Laura, and Robin, who have really gone above and beyond by serving five extra months beyond their board terms to get us to this COVID delayed AGM date. Uh, we are so lucky to have such dedicated board members supporting the organization. So now over to our staff who are going to provide updates on what we've been up to and some previews of what is to come. So you'll hear from Juby followed by Beatrice and then Ian and then I'll wrap up at the end. So over to you, Juby. Thanks, Linda. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Juby, and I'm just gonna share with you some of the highlights that um, I've been working on, some of the project work. Um, next slide, Cindy, please. All right. So with funding from Clean Air Hamilton, our Trees Please project in 2019 was in the Parkview neighborhood. Next slide. Um, Trees Please started in 2016, and we've been systematically going through each neighborhood in the lower city. Parkview neighborhood boundaries are the Nikola Tesla Boulevard uh, to the rail lines, Parkdale Avenue to the Red Hill Trail. On the map, you can see um, those green dots are the trees we inventoried, and we inventoried 411 trees last year. And on the graph you'll see, um, the graph on the left indicates the trees we've identified. So you can see the top uh, three kinds of trees um, that we, we saw were Norway maples, Austrian pines, and honey locusts, which is very similar to other neighborhoods that we've done these inventories in. Um, next slide, please. We also collect air quality data using the Dylos monitors. Um, these monitors collect particulate matter levels 2.5 and PM2 point, or PM10. Combining these two data sets, the, the tree inventorying and the air quality data, we try and figure out ways to get more trees in the neighborhoods. Next slide, please. Um, so, one of the ways we do this is we host a free tree giveaway. 
And in 2019, we did that specifically in the Park uh, View neighborhood. And we had 30 requests, which was great. And on this map, you can see where all those trees went. Um, next slide, please. So some of the highlights um, from 2019. Um, when we made the decision to work in the Parkview neighborhood, the same time the neighborhood themselves started to organize. The industry around the neighborhood, especially along Nikola Tesla, has been changing in the last 10, 12 years, and the impacts on the residents nearby have just been increasing. So for instance, you know, there's lots of loud noises, lots of loud bangs that actually wake and startle the, the residents awake, um, awake in the middle of the night. Um, they're experiencing more air pollution, especially particulate matter, which prevents them from opening the windows and enjoying enjoying the weather. Um, so we've been working alongside them and this relationship continues, especially um, between Linda and the residents and we'll just keep, we'll keep working away with them. Next slide, please. Um, so when we're in each neighborhood, we take note of certain things. So in 2019, we saw this potentially very hazardous tree. This tree is an ash tree and you can already see that it's it's declining and um, you can see that the very large branches were actually leaning very heavily against the hydro line. So we took these photos and sent them to our contacts at the city and, and they handled it. Um, another thing that we experienced in Parkview was we were in Leaside Park which just runs parallel to Nikola Tesla Boulevard. And one day when we were out inventorying the trees, you know, we have measuring tape that we wrap around the tree trunks and we have equipment that um, when we're not using, will drop to the ground. And every time we would unwrap the diameter tape or, or drop equipment, we would notice this plume of particulate. And by the end, our shoes and pants were covered in this rust colored particulate and we, sent a note to the Ministry of Environment and they, they claimed it was something called lawn rust, which not exactly sure if that's what it was. So if anyone knows, that's, um, yeah, let us know because we don't think it's lawn rust. Um, next slide, please. So some good news. So, you know, we're walking around Rennie Street and City of Hamilton Forestry Division crews were out planting new trees and there's always just really heartening to see trees where there weren't trees before. Um, next slide. So we've been working very hard. Um, this year we've been in the Homeside neighborhood and we've got some upcoming events. You can see an Air and Trees tour on the October 14th and a Trees from Seed workshop on the 17th with um, Stefan Weber um, and a Fall Tree Walk in Gage Park with um, Charlie Brigg. These are going to be very small, um, limited, uh, workshops and events. But if you're interested, just go to environmenthamilton.org and under projects, look up trees, please, and you'll see the registration and, and more details for these upcoming events. Next slide, please. All right, so Good Food Box in 2019 was great. Um, we packed about 4,200 boxes, and this is a great community initiative. We couldn't do it without our partners and volunteers. And I miss it. I miss the day, I miss the pack, I miss the volunteers. Um, and hopefully we can resume this project sooner rather than later. Next slide, please. So bike day, bike month. So um, bike day, bike month is a project of Smart Commute Hamilton and we've been partnering with them for a couple of year, years now. Last year, about 650 participants gathered together at city halls um, in May back in the day when we could gather in large numbers. Um, this year in 2020, bike month looked differently. There were, there were of course no large gatherings and, um, but there were some other, there were some events happening um, through it. Hopefully we can have bike day, bike month sooner rather than later as well. Next slide, please. 
So something that I've been working on that I worked on in 2020 was we created something, an, an initiative called Let's Get Growing in Ward 3. And with thanks to Councillor Narendra Nan and her team, um, this was a seed sharing initiative um, to encourage more green stuff, more trees, more pollinator plants, more veggies, more, her more herbs. We had seven depots to act as pickup locations. So in the time of the pandemic, there was no contacts. We had almost 100 requests from Ward 3 residents and 41 different seeds were distributed throughout the ward. Next slide, please. It was a great project to work on and, and really thanks to everyone who participated. Next slide. Okay, so this is my last slide. Um, sewer pipe watch is something I've been working on. Uh, thanks to Lush Canada for the support. We've done versions of monitoring sewer outfalls in the past and this year we received front page coverage on the Hamil in the Hamilton Spectator. We will continue to monitor um, certain outfalls and collect E. coli samples and take readings of oxygen levels at, um, along certain spots along the Red Hill and Davis Creek. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, this is my last slide. Thanks so much. I think uh, Beatrice is up next. Yeah, hello. So I'm Beatrice Coco. And I'm reporting from the Environment Hamilton office, actually. I'm, here. I'm actually here today. Um, so I am the project manager for the Friendly Streets project. In, um, so next slide, please. So Friendly Streets is an initiative to cycle Hamilton since 2017. And we have engaged residents and diverse community stakeholders in building capacity and local leadership for safer, greener, healthier, and more equitable neighborhood streets. For a little bit of background, um, you can see on the slide, the funding for the initial pilot stage was provided by the Ontario Training Foundation, and we focused efforts in the area around the Hamilton General Hospital and the neighborhoods of Beasley, Lansdale, and Gibson, otherwise known as Gala. And during that time, we established a, a Friendly Streets um, steering committee at the General Hospital with the senior administrators and other local community stakeholders. And we also set up two Friendly Streets working groups one through the Beasley Neighborhood Association and the other through the Gala Hub. In 2019, through funding from the Hamilton Community Foundation and Clean Air Hamilton, we continued our work in this area of the city. And Cindy, I'm gonna skip the next two slides in the interest of time, because we'll get there. So at this slide, you can see that these are our 2019 project funders and supporters and partners that helped us continue our work in this neighborhood. Next slide, please. So in 2019, our friendly speak Steering Committee met regularly at the Hamilton General Hospital. And here you can see some of the action items that we focused on, including assigned bike paths to hospital, which hopefully will materialize in the ne next uh, year or so, uh, traffic calming, tree planting, and so on. And from a 2018 council motion to create a hospital zone, improvements in the area included a signalized pedestrian crossing at Victoria Copeland that was installed in the fall of that year. As well, we were informed by staff from transportation operations and maintenance that the plan is to implement designated hospital safety zones throughout the city of Hamilton. So hopefully that goes through as well. Uh, so I'll say next slide. Finally, we funded from the Hamilton Community Foundation's Community Health and Education Initiative. And with help from volunteers, we conducted surveys on perceptions of air quality, general traffic safety, enjoyment of streetscape and sense of well-being, demographics, likelihood of access to transit, and cycling and wayfinding levels of comfort in the hospital zone. This was done before any street changes were made. Unfortunately, we were unable to complete the study because post, like the implementations of street changes had not yet occurred. So we couldn't do that, that second part and hopefully we will get to that. Next slide, please. Friendly Street's Beasley Working Group, the efforts really focus on improving livability along BZ's five arterial roads. Traffic concerns continue to plague the neighborhood. Along Wilson Street, uh, the air, the very poor air quality, poor tree canopy cover are really major issues, as are the narrow sidewalks in front of the school and polluting industrial trucks on truck routes that hem in the sensitive land use area with its school, its community center, its park, its daycare, medical center. Next slide, please. Frustrated with the lack of traction we were getting at the city level, we decided to keep pushing on, but at the same time, work on green in the streets. 
through encouraging residents to plant the free street, street trees, and we looked at ways to uplift alleyways as clean air routes. Later on the year, we launched the paved cannon in front of the Good Shepherd Venture Center on Cannon Street. And our latest, that's our latest green initiative for, with, in partnership with Good Shepherd BC Neighborhoods Association Green Venture. And this is to the paved stretch of the um, area of space there to plant trees. And the funding has been provided by the Ward 2 Council. You can look into the next slide, please. All right, so here's a, a fun time that we had with the uh, with our Ward Councillor. Um, Councillor Nan. It was a bike ride audit. Uh, it was all ages. You can see some small children there. The ride highlighted the need for, for more uh, safer cycling infrastructure and connectivity and we really look forward to improved uh, cycling conditions across the ward. Next slide. Then both BC and Gala working groups identified the need to tackle the industrial truck, the industrial truck traffic shortcutting through those neighborhoods and the core of the city. To this end, we started truck counts, as well as air quality monitoring, collecting this data so that we could present our argument to the city that this, the horribly permissive truck route network is harmful to the community well-being and health and is really no longer acceptable. Next slide, please. Members from both our Beasley and Gala working group joined the efforts to form the Truck Route Reboot Collective to tackle the issue of these shortcut and industrial trucks. We delegated in May and we were successful in changing the terms of reference for the truck route master plan review, which is currently underway, by the way, to include that attention to be paid to sensitive land use and community health and well-being, and special attention to those living on truck routes. In November, again, a member of the group delegated to request that there be full transparency at the engagement table, that is with industry and community partners and residents all in face-to-face -face during these discussions. Okay, so next slide, please. Now, I didn't mention it before, but we did get some funding through the Hamilton Community Foundation to expand our Friendly Streets project into a new neighborhood, and that's Riverdale and Centennial neighborhoods. Riverdale has a very high population of newcomers and young families. In November, we ran six workshops and a walk and order at the Lake Avenue School with the assistance of three amazing McMaster students from the Sustainability 3SO3 course to gather children's perspectives and challenges in walking and cycling and moving around in the neighborhood. Next slide, please. And in September of that year, uh, we were contracted by the City of Hamilton's Vision Zero program for a year-long initiative. Vision Zero being a global movement with a simple mission, really, to, to have zero serious injuries or deaths occur on roadways. Rainy Street's Vision Zero Hamilton took place in three neighborhoods. So Keith and Kirkendall North were in the lower city and Butler on the upper escarpment. But due to COVID-19, our face-to-face -face engagement ended before we could actually finish the, the complete the project. However, we did have an online survey that, um, that you know, we collected information that way and sharing with staff. So next slide, please. Just a few more slides about what we did. We, we uh, basically, along with our routine Side, uh, street audits, we tabled at the Eva Rothwell Center. This form of engagement was very efficient because we were able to engage a, a, an older demographic. So for instance, the seniors go to the breakfast club, we had to talk to them. Um, language was a barrier sometimes. We couldn't speak Mandarin, but we did have Google Translate and we also were able to use our French language skills. Um, next slide, please. And up at Butler, it was, a w again, we had to figure out unique ways to engage residents. And we sought input from the South Mountain planning team that was very late in the day before COVID struck uh, and well announced. And then we also uh, communicated with and engaged the St. Jean de Beauvais secondary school community. We noted opportunities to put in like really protected bike lanes similar to the, the one on Governor Road in Dundas and, and, and the councillor Paul is very interested in that. Next slide please. And in other updates, this is the Hamilton Pollinator Project in partnership with the Hamilton Naturalist Club, working to expand our reach and our tools. Many wonderful volunteers and students especially helped develop a toolkit, which really is for beginners to, ex to expert gardeners, including growing and maintaining gardens for all seasons. So you can go to the website and this is a great time to grow, to plant um, native species. Uh, next slide, please. 
Growing the project reach, we promoted our free certification program. With it, we are feeding pollinators vines that you get when you rent to certify. And the Get on the Map campaign, a visual way to communicate the extent of community residents and stakeholders helping to build uninterrupted pollinator corridors across Hamilton. And as we do yearly since 2016, we help promote the Monarch Awards. This is an award of excellence for gardeners who garden to benefit nature. And in June, we had a fun time during Pollinator Week with Donut Monster partnering with us to raise awareness again about the need to uplift declining populations of pollinators with this delicious rosemary maple brulee donut. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, as well, we ramped up our efforts towards creating a biodiversity action plan for the city of Hamilton. Decline in biodiversity and climate change are twin crises, and yet nature has solutions to climate breakdown. So we really should be tackling the two side by side. Uh, okay, where's my note? Oops, sorry. All right, all throughout 2019, we researched the work of other municipalities, and we pulled together our own skeleton action plan for our working group, with our working group members. Jen Baker from the Hamilton Naturalist Club delegated in November and a motion passed to study the feasibility of a plan. That was in February 2020. So we continue with that work. And finally, next slide, we resurrected a project that has been unfunded since it ended in 2018. In September, we worked with students from the City Lab Semester in Residence program on our Climate Resilience to Extreme Weather Hamilton Initiative, a network of local groups seeking to prepare neighborhoods um, residents, particularly the most vulnerable of us for extreme weather emergencies. We renamed the initiative Climate Ready Hamilton. The students held a wrap-up event in November and currently it's still unfunded, but we are fortunate to have an intern who's just joined us, Deepak Palanchiami, has begun revising the initiative. And so if anyone's interested, please contact me and that's it. Thanks for listening. I'm done. Cut. <laughs> Thank you so much, Beatrice. Thank you. I think we're waiting for Ian to come on next. Okay. Yep, I'm ready to go. All right. Want to? Is it, can everyone hear me fine? I just want to confirm. We sure can. Okay, great. So yeah, if you want to move over to the next slide, Cindy. So yeah, hi everybody. My name is Ian. I'm the climate campaign coordinator here at Environment Hamilton. Um, and so just a brief overview of the work that I've been doing. Um, I'm just going to start off with. Uh, a quick summary of the work that Hamilton Transit Alliance and the Hamilton Transit Riders Union has been uh, undergoing. Um, so pre-pandemic, um, the Hamilton Transit Alliance was uh, starting to really come into its own and meet regularly. Uh, for those who are on the call who aren't aware, the Hamilton Transit Alliance is a coalition group of uh, other Hamilton organizations within the city. Um, who all uh, agree with us on the importance of transit within the city and increased investment. Um, as well as uh, with the Hamilton Transit Riders Union, that is a separate organization that is seeking to represent riders' interests uh, as they take the HSR and uh, ultimately benefit them. Um, and so the Hamilton Transit Alliance, uh, we actually made our first uh, public uh, release, uh, which is when uh, last year, almost a year, almost a year now, uh, the provincial government unfortunately canceled the Hamilton LRT and the Hamilton Transit Alliance put out a statement uh, strongly disagreeing and condemning that action while at the same time still pushing the province to commit to keeping the money that was allocated to the LRT to transit at the very least if the LRT is going to remain canceled. Um, but the real benefit to the Hamilton Transit Alliance has really been the uh, uh, different groups coming together and communicating and keeping each other up to date. Um, and we are in a unique position to be really ready for the pandemic to hit. So I'm actually going to skip over to the next slide now. And this was um, the Keep Transit Moving campaign was first initiated by our friends TTC Riders in Toronto. Um, but we joined in with them along with other groups across the, across the entire nation, uh, demanding that our federal and provincial governments step in and help municipalities with emergency funding for transit. As we know, within the city of Hamilton, transit is really important to help us reach our emission reduction goals. But nationally speaking, um, and globally speaking, transit was really hit hard. And what we really needed was for essentially municipalities to get a bailout of sorts. Um, 
And while so many different members of this coalition truly believe that there needs to be ongoing operational support for transit from both the federal and provincial governments, really what we tried to do was get as much support as we can um, to put pressure on both first the federal government and then the provincial governments to support our municipal transit systems. And that actually ended up being very successful. So we had the safe restart agreement uh, pass through um, and phase one has already been given to the city of Hamilton to help with our transit system. And uniquely to Hamilton, our transit system already rebounded to at least 50% ridership already while other cities are lagging behind us. And now we are continuing to monitor the phase two of the safe restart agreement. And just as a quick flag for everyone, phase two for that safe restart agreement um, has some proposed conditions. You might have seen uh, the proposal of microtransit replacing bus routes, um, but there's also some concerning issues there with integration of fares across a, a wider region, um, as well as reduced autonomy for local, for local communities to have control over their transit system. And so I'm looking forward to continue working with my allies, both provincially and federally, um, to really you know, put pressure on our leaders and make the right choices for transit. Um, and uniquely, Hamilton was uh, in a good position with regards to this in that the Hamilton Transit Alliance was already well established. And I essentially learned that there's no other group quite like the Hamilton Transit Alliance that exists in any other city. So Hamilton was really leading the charge on transit when it came to representation from across the sector. So it wasn't just environmental groups, it was labor, it was business and more. And I'll skip over to the next slide. And uh, keeping up with the theme of transit, we had a successful webinar uh, with the author James Wilt, and I'll still boost his book that you can get at King Street West Books. Um, and you can actually find a recording of the audio of that meeting on a SoundCloud that is hosted by us. Um, and if you have trouble finding it, I can uh, send it to you as well. And I'll just skip over to the next slide now. And so in addition to the transit work that I've been primarily focused on with regards to the pandemic and the severe impacts that we've seen as a result of the pandemic on transit, um, Environment Hamilton has also stepped up and I feel uh, particularly privileged to have been able to represent Environment Hamilton. Um, this is an image of me speaking at the, uh, the HWDSB Kids Need Help uh, Community Teach-In. Um, with regards to defunding the police. And so I was extremely pleased to have been able to represent Environment Hamilton that, at that event um, and allow us to continue to support community and be allies within the city of Hamilton. And I'll just uh, skip to the next slide now again. And, uh, and uh, what we've seen here is um, we're relaunching the stormwater uh, petition that many of you have probably signed already. Um, the reasoning for this is that we technically have a new council and the wording of the old petition is out of date because in the four years since that first petition was put together, many other cities have now jumped on and implemented their own programs, very similar to the way uh, we want to see Hamilton adopt. Um, and so there's a new petition up if you go to environmenthamilton.org slash stormwater. If you've already signed the old petition, please resign it. I need your uh, name on that again. And we're going to be sharing that with council and continue to do outreach and education and city staff who uh, passionately been wanting a program like this in the city of Hamilton are going to be doing increased consultation in 2021 and we look really forward to participating in that and ultimately making it clear to council that this has been a long overdue uh, measure that needs to be implemented. And uh, just before we move on to the next slide, I actually just want to flag these images and a lot of the work that was done on the revamping of this petition. Um, I had a great amount of help from our three-time uh, summer intern Angela Dittrich who returned to us over the summer and worked with us remotely. And I just uh, want to give a shout out to Angela as always for being such a great intern for us from uh, the summer. And I'm just going to skip over to the next slide. And uh, Linda's going to uh, touch on this in her final remarks, but I do just want to flag that the city of Burlington has moved forward um, quite a bit actually on implementing a home energy retrofit opportunity program or HERO program. Um, so an idea that originally started here in Hamilton, inspired by the Toronto Health Program, uh, is actually well on its way in Burlington. Um, but I'm very pleased to sit on the implementation team for the Bay Area Climate Change Council um, that is looking at how we can get both the cities of Hamilton and Burlington to implement a program together that will allow homeowners to ultimately make improvements on their home to reduce energy consumption and do our part to ultimately uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions to the targets that we need them as they result from energy use at homes. And I'll just skip over to the next slide again. 
And then, yes, uh, as, as you all are aware, the city of Hamilton declared a climate emergency uh, at the last AGM was when I was going to first bring that up. Um, in the meantime, since then, we've seen council take some positive steps. Uh, city staff are continuing to work on this. However, during the pandemic, uh, city staff were diverted away from climate work. Um, the city lead on climate work was actually completely diverted. And for a period of time, we only had one city staffer working on climate change work for uh, about six or seven months there. Um, and so I'm just going to skip over to the next slide right now, Cindy. And what I really want to just flag as my last slide here is that the 2021 budget is coming up. They are on a delay because of the way the pandemic has impacted the city's functioning. So we are at the perfect time to make it clear to council that now is the time to implement a climate lens on the 2021 budget. Uh, we need to continue to out do outreach. We've severely had uh, our efforts reduced because of the pandemic. We couldn't do door-to-door -door work that we wanted to do over the summer. We weren't at community festivals and we weren't out in the community anymore because we can't. Um, and so Environment Hamilton is going to continue putting pressure on City Council to do the right thing. And as a final call to action, I do want to flag that uh, Environment Hamilton member Roman Perico, I believe, is on this call at, through his role as uh, one of the co-chairs of the uh, Hamilton Cycling Committee. Um, submitted a proposed uh, motion to the City Council to look at bike infrastructure across the city. Um, and at the beginning of that motion, the Cycling uh, Committee ultimately put in um, a reference to the Climate Emergency Declaration that was declared. And today, the Public Works Committee uh, amended that motion to remove the wording that identifies climate change as the single largest threat to municipalities. Um, this is extremely concerning as it's just two years after the fact council seems to be walking back from a commitment that they unanimously made. Um, so for those of you who are on the call today, please be ready to receive an email tomorrow and we're going to be asking you to call on your councillors uh, over the next coming week before that decision is ultimately ratified. And uh, with that, that'll end my portion of the presentation. Thank you so much, Ian. So uh, now we're moving on to Linda Lukasik, our executive director. Yes, hi, thanks so much, Cindy. Cindy, I was just gonna ask you, we've had some people ask if we can activate the closed captioning feature, and I believe that's on the toolbar that you have there that controls the advancing of the slides. So would you be able to just click the, um, the CC? You should see it on your toolbar. I don't see it on my toolbar. Um, I see... There's a CC right beside what looks like an eye for information because we yeah, I don't have that either. I'm thinking that might be um, uh, meeting info, disable annotation for others. Okay. Okay. Uh, I apologize to the folks in the meeting who've requested the closed captioning. We can't seem to, I, I've never had to activate it before. And um, oh, I have Ian saying there is no closed captioning in zoom. So, um, I'm not sure what else to suggest for tonight. Um, so I, I apologize to anyone who was hoping we could have that feature set up. Um, Cindy, could you advance to the next slide for me, please? Of course. So I just want to start by thanking again our staff, Juby, Beatrice, and Nian for all of their fantastic work. And I should also acknowledge that um, since the last time we met, we have also had a number of fantastic student interns. So Ian already mentioned Angela, um, who was back with us again this summer. Last summer, we also had a, a wonderful intern named Adrian Klein. And right now with COVID, we've got summer, summer interns who are really more like fall interns, um, Deepak Palanichami and um, Clara Voy de Villiers, who are both working with us right now. So we're really grateful for those um, Canada Summer Jobs grants that enable us to bring young people into the organization to work with us. Um, so I wanted to start today just by giving you a quick update, an overview of some of the advocacy and outreach work that I've been doing um, since we last met. Ongoing, of course, are, are the efforts to see Hamilton's air quality improved. And since 2003, um, we've been encouraging residents to help us with watching industrial stacks. Um, this work is critically important because in Hamilton, people living in neighborhoods near the industrial core have to deal um, with higher levels of air pollution than the rest of us. Um, we describe this at Environment Hamilton as the triple whammy effect, 
We're all impacted to varying degrees by vehicle emissions and pollution that migrates up the Ohio Valley from the good old United States into, Amer into Ontario. Uh, but people living close to our industrial core also face the largest impacts from industrial emissions, including known cancer-causing substances um, like benzene and benzoapyrene that we know are released from um, our two local steel mills, Stelco and Defasco, and some of the, some of the associated industries. Um, our Stackwatch program provides people with the basic information that they need to observe, document, and report industrial emission problems. And we continue to watch too. Um, and if anything, our efforts have been amplified during the COVID crisis. Um, working re remotely, I know for me, means that I can take almost daily bike rides. <laughs> Maybe I'm weird, but these rides serve not only to enable me to get out and get some exercise, but also as an important opportunity to check on the stacks and to report any problems that I see. I was out there this morning, in fact, documenting and reporting some issues. So we've been actively encouraging others to get out there too and to help us with this effort. And I'm really pleased to say that we have a number of people keen to volunteer with EH who've responded to the call to Stackwatch, um, about a dozen of them. And right now we provide people with basic instructions via email just to get them out there. Um, and plans are underway to prepare a virtual workshop um, to walk people through the process in more detail and provide some, some visuals. And COVID permitting, we really hope we could organize some Stackwatch walks in the near future. So if you're interested in getting involved in Stackwatching over the coming months, um, please send me an email. Um, it's lucasic at environmenthamilton.org. You can see my email on the screen and I'll get you set up. And so the slide that I've got up shows our Stackwatch magnet that if we were out at public events, we'd be handing out. And that was created in collaboration with Crown Point. And more specifically, it was directly supported uh, by EH members and Crown Point residents, Kat and Johan Besner, who were very involved in um, pushing and, and for, for improvements on industrial emissions. There's also a Stackwatch Twitter account, and it's kudos to Johan, who's been helping to get that revitalized uh, and revived. Um, and so remember that sharing what you see is also a great way to raise public awareness about any industrial emission problems. So please follow at Stackwatch on Twitter and tag Stackwatch when you tweet any industrial emission problems. Next slide, please. Linda, before I go to the next slide, I see mm -hmm. the CC that you're mentioning. It seems to be on the actual slide program. And so it's linked okay. to the person who's presenting. So if you want to hit it while you're presenting, it may close caption your comments. Okay, let me see if I can do that because I don't even know if I can make that bar come up, Cindy. And, and I don't know that it will influence the, the one I'm showing. Right. I tried turning it on while your mic was going and it, it didn't create any captions. Okay, yeah, it does. I can't see anything here that allows me to activate it. Okay, my oh, wait. Yeah, let me try. Yeah, no. Okay. So next slide, please, Cindy. So those of you who know us know that uh, we spend a lot of time talking to people about their environmental rights. So I want to talk a little bit about some of what we've done over the past year. Um, in Ontario, we are really lucky to have an environmental bill of rights at the provincial level. And Environment Hamilton continues to make people aware of what our rights are under that bill. Um, so over the last year plus, we provided three live and one virtual training session. And I should note that the one of the live and one of the virtuals was offered through MPP Sandy Shaw um, through her office with events that she organized. So it was great to have an opportunity to connect with her constituents and, and people beyond to provide them with the basics of how to use the bill. Um, we also prepared a how-to guide to facilitate the public's ability to prepare and submit environmental Bill of Rights comments. And over the last year, we also prepared and submitted Bill of Rights comments on a total of 11 Environmental Registry of Ontario postings. Um, and on the industrial side of things, we submitted comments uh, related to at least three local industries, including budget waste disposal on Sherman Avenue North, Triple M Metal Recovery, one of the large scrap yards in the east end of the city, and Capital Sewer Pipe, a facility that's out uh, actually in my neighborhood, um, not far from Eastgate Square. Um, next slide, please. 
I just want to zoom a little bit of a spotlight in on some of the impacts of the environmental rights work and the stack watching work and, and what it can lead to on the ground. So I wanted to talk a little bit about American Iron and Metal and, and you already heard a bit from Juby about the Parkview East neighborhood and some of the challenges that they've faced and unfortunately um, Ames very large scrapyard in the East End is a major source of the impacts that that neighborhood has been experiencing. Um, so what we've been doing there is regular monitoring and reporting of problem area emissions from Ames new, I, I call it their mega metal shredder. So it's a massive piece of uh, um, equipment that's designed to shred up scrap metal for recycling, which is great, but there are a whole lot of impacts that seem to be emerging from this facility. So you may have seen some of the coverage in the media. Um, the neighborhood has been impacted by explosions, which now seem to be under control, but there are still ongoing issues with, with air emissions from the facility. Uh, so we did work over the last year, too, to help a Parkview resident, Dave Kebick, to prepare and submit um, an appeal of the Provincial Air and Noise Permit for the facility, just to really um, send that message that the community is having concerns about the impacts. Uh, we also filed a complaint to the Hamilton Fire Department um, regarding a massive scrap pile on the site. Um, and, and we did raise concerns about other scrap yards in the city, not just AIM, but just that general practice of allowing these massive piles to accumulate because we've had a number of instances where they go up in flames and the environmental impacts from that are quite se severe. Um, the, the fire department did an, uh, an inspection and AIM was ordered to dismantle the pile. Um, the company appealed the order. Uh, there is a, a provincial level tribunal and we still haven't seen the outcome of that decision, but I can tell you that the piles are not nearly as big as they used to be, but we'll certainly watch for the outcome of that decision. Next slide. I also wanted to talk a little bit about ArcelorMittal de Fasco because we have noticed through stack watching in recent, recent uh, months that there have been some issues. So I wanted to share some of what we've been seeing August into September from the facility. Um, and we are documenting and reporting and encouraging other community members to do the same. So these are all um, coal coven emissions, whether they're fugitive emissions that you can see at the top or emissions right out of the stacks. Um, very high opacity, so very dark smoke. Um, and we certainly have concerns about the kinds of contaminants that you would see coming out of emissions like this from the coal plants. Um, so we will certainly continue to document and report these issues and support community members in their efforts to do the same. And again, I would point to the opportunity to stack watch if, if you're out there interested in getting some exercise, integrating this into a daily run or ride or walk, we'd love to have you helping us. Uh, next slide. I don't want to give you the idea that all we do is complain about what's happening with industry. So I also wanted to help you to understand that we do participate in a number of local industrial community liaison committees as a stakeholder. Um, and, and so we sit on one for Arcelor, for Stelco and for Rutgers, a company that deals with steel industry byproduct. And through our role there, we certainly um, push to um, make the industries do the best that they can do. And when they do good things, we like to acknowledge and applaud that. Um, so those are good spaces to sit and learn more and to raise concerns and to push for change. Um, Environment Hamilton, through me, I serve as the co-chair of the Ministry of Environment's external working group for the provincial air quality regulation. That's another great opportunity um, to be part of a bigger process um, that includes people from impacted um, airsheds across the province, Hamilton, Sarnia, uh, Sudbury, Sault Ste. Marie, um, and their representatives from industry, other environmental organizations, public health units, Ministry of Environment, of course. And um, we don't always agree at that table, but we certainly do a lot of talking and trying to work through issues. And I just have a quick stay tuned here. There are a number of us locally who are very aware of this. Um, the iron and steel sector is pursuing what's called an Ontario industry standard um, for emissions from the steel mills. We have concerns about this shift. Um, and the public will be consulted on this shift. Um, so we'll be sure um, through Environment Hamilton and through the community um, members that we work with to ensure that everyone is aware of this and, and can weigh in when the opportunities emerge. Next slide. 
So I want to um, talk now a little bit about growth planning in the climate crisis. Environment Hamilton has spent a number of years working on these issues. We've talked a lot about growing the green belt and the importance of that. Um, we've also talked a lot about the reality that you can't achieve agricultural land and rural natural areas protection without paying attention to how urban areas are growing. Um, so we have called as for as part of our climate work the city to establish a firm urban boundary and really focus on containing urban growth within that boundary. Um, there, there are huge links between smart urban growth um, and rural agricultural natural areas protection and um, we can't say that enough um, and um, I can elaborate on the links to climate. Some of them are very obvious. So, you know, if we gobble up all our, of our farmland with sprawl development, um, we'll have a food security issue. Um, those natural areas out in the outer reaches of the watershed play a critically important role when it comes to extreme weather, um, mitigation of extreme weather flows, um, cooling, biodiversity, um, lots of the things that Beatrice and Ian already spoke to, they all come into play when we're talking about growth planning. Um, so over the past year, we have spent time um, giving public delegations to the cities, to their planning committee, um, to, make, to make that planning committee aware of what, of our, what our concerns are. We've also worked with community members to help them to do the same um, and to go to planning committee and encourage uh, development proposals to be assessed through a climate lens. So really the key issue right now is that the city of Hamilton land needs assessment process um, is proceeding. Uh, and this is an exercise the city goes through to determine how much land it needs to grow. And what I can tell you um, in no uncertain terms is that despite the fact that we're in the midst of a pandemic, our provincial Ford government has continued to quite recklessly dismantle the policies and the growth plan, provincial growth plan for the greater Golden Horseshoe a plan that was designed to really curb urban sprawl and facilitate protection of um, agricultural lands. Uh, it's put the city in a position even where um, they're being pressured as are other municipalities in the Greater Golden Horseshoe to continue to expand outward to accommodate growth. So for instance, one of the recent changes requires um, the municipality to plan to accommodate growth to 2051. It's a ridiculously long timeline um, and anyone who deals with population and jobs growth projections would tell you that we can't with any certainty predict that far out what we're going to be dealing with. So it's a, it's a challenge um, and it's one that we're watching closely. Um, we do always like to say that municipalities, including Hamilton, have the power. There, there are minimum targets that the city must meet to intensify within um, uh, urban built up areas and to achieve density targets in urban areas, kind of on the, on the edges, sort of at the rural urban interface. Um, the province sets minimums and cities can set higher targets. So what we're saying is that Hamilton must set higher targets so that we can keep that urban boundary firm and do a serious job of addressing the climate emergency and planning for climate resilience. Next slide. Um, just quickly, we're very actively involved, and this is linked to our, our local work on growth planning, very actively involved with the Ontario Greenbelt Alliance. Um, Environment Hamilton is currently serving as the administrator of the Alliance's latest campaign effort, which is funded by the Greenbelt Foundation. We're working to expand the Alliance to, to make it stronger and more resilient, so more organizations coming together and speaking out to protect Ontario's Greenbelt and to stop urban sprawl. Um, so watch for the launch of the Greenbelt Alliance's Fall 2020 campaign. We need you all to show some love for the Greenbelt and to speak out against urban sprawl. So more to come on that front. Next slide. Just very quickly, I want to summarize too some of the climate work that Environment Hamilton does that fits into a larger framework. So as an organization, we have a climate advisory committee made up of staff and both current and past board members. Um, that committee uh, strategizes about our climate action efforts. Um, and what's very interesting is that since July of last year, we've been meeting almost quarterly with Jeanette Smith, the city manager, to discuss our issues and concerns. And you've already heard from, from Ian that um, we do have some problems just in terms of um, the climate emergency seeming to have been put on the back burner during the pandemic. So we've been pressuring the city to acknowledge that it's a looming 
it's a looming crisis, it's a tsunami we can't ignore. Um, we're also very actively involved with the Bay Area Climate Change Council, um, which is a two cities, Hamilton, Burlington, um, sort of hosted by the Mohawk um, Center for Climate Change Management. So I serve on the steering committee for that organization. Uh, Beatrice is serving on the transportation implementation team and Ian is serving on the home energy retrofit team of that organization. So we've got a strong presence there too. Um, I also want to mention the Urban Climate Alliance and those who have been at past meetings will have heard me talk about the Alliance before. We've remobilized, we have some support from the ECHO Foundation to do so. Um, and so the four um, groups and, and we've got the Citizens Environment Alliance, which is in Windsor, Ecology Ottawa, Environment Hamilton and the Toronto Environmental Alliance. Uh, we're all in urban centers that have declared municipalities that have declared climate emergencies. So we'll be doing some interesting work to look at how our municipalities are doing in actually taking serious action to respond to that, those declarations. So we'll be comparing between those cities and you'll stay tuned, you'll be sure to see some information coming on that front. Next slide. And that's it. Thank you very much for the opportunity to give you all an update on what we've been up to. And I think we'd all be happy to answer questions if anyone has any. Exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say thank you so much. Incredible staff that we have. And I mean, seeing that presentation, I don't think anyone can disagree that there's been some impressive work that's been done this last year. So if there are any questions now, the Q&A that is listed on the bar is different from the chat. And that's the area where we're asking for you to put any questions in. It is being monitored. And I'll just give everybody a minute to uh, do that if they're taking the time to do that. While we're waiting, Linda, could you mm -hmm. make me the host again so I could? Oh, yes. Yeah. And just in case anyone is feverishly rushing to type in a question, I'm, I'm just going to give it a few more seconds. But as of right now, there are no questions in the queue. I should add, feel free to email any of us if you don't want to ask a question tonight. Um, feel free, uh, all of our contact information is on the website and I think most of us have shared. Well, you, you know how to reach me by email, so don't hesitate to drop us a note and we can follow up with you after the meeting too. And certainly if any questions come in in the next little while, we can circle back perhaps, but it looks like at this time there are no questions. And so I'm just going to start by again thanking all of you for your wonderful presentations. And uh, now I think we need two motions. So the first motion we need is to confirm the acts of the directors for the past year. So uh, we need a mover and a seconder to confirm the acts of the board of directors for the last year. And I believe something's happening in the chat. And somebody let me know if we have a mover and a seconder. Yes, we do. Okay, Ryan, super. Ryan and Don. Wonderful. So seeing that we have a mover and a seconder, uh, can we have the poll screen then? Great. So we're voting now on a motion to confirm the acts of the Board of Directors for the past year. And there are your options and I'll give everybody a few moments to vote. So we're, we're good. I'll end the poll and share. Super. Okay. So uh, there we have. Um, and the majority have, have confirmed that, so that motion is carried. Excellent. And so now we are looking for a second motion, and this motion is to move that all acts, contracts, bylaws, proceedings, appointments, elections, and payments enacted and made, enacted, made, and done, and taken by the directors and officers of the corporation since the 8th of April 2019, referred to in the minutes of the meetings of the Board of Directors or in the annual reports of the corporation or in the EH News Environment Hamilton newsletters or reported on the Environment Hamilton website are hereby approved, ratified, and confirmed. So we're looking for a mover and a seconder on that. 
I, yeah. Moved by Zoe Bedford and seconded by Don McLean. Wow. Okay. Moved by Zoe Bedford and seconded by Don McLean. Incredible. Um, wonderful. So at this time, we'll screen that poll. And again, I'll let you read that again if you like. Um, so we're voting to confirm, approve, and ratify. Oh, we've just got the wrong poll up. I have the treasurer's report. It just went crazy. There it is. It's still going. Is this the right one? Yeah. To make bizarre errors, you always need technology. So I don't see one on my screen right now, but I'm... How about I'm sharing... There we go. Yes. And we see the results from the first poll. Um, and... Something weird is happening. <laughs> can you see the results? I can see the results from the first motion. And, um, um, okay, so which one were we doing? Because it keeps flipping around on me. Okay, so I, I'm not sure I was about to read that one to see if that was correct, but I didn't think we'd voted yet. We're uh, looking for the motion that moves that all acts, contracts, bylaws, proceeding, appointments, elections, and payments enacted and done by the directors and officers of the corporation since the 8th of April, 2019, referred to in the minutes of the meetings of the board of directors or in the annual reports of the corporation or in the newsletters or reported on the website are hereby approved, ratified, and confirmed. Okay, so we did vote, and hopefully you can see the results. Super, okay. Yes, I can, and that motion is carried. Okay, excellent. Uh, thank you, everyone at home, for your patience. This is uh, many cooks, but we're making it work. Um, okay, so uh, at this time, we also have an additional um, motion. Uh, we're looking for the membership to, uh, well, we're seeking a motion from the membership to accept modifications of the Environment Hamilton bylaws. And these modifications specifically are intended to include gender neutral language throughout our bylaw, um, you know, entirety. So uh, we're looking for a mover and a seconder to approve the changes to our bylaws, which really only effectively alter the language to be gender neutral. Do we have a mover and a seconder, Robin? Isadora Van Reem is moved and Don McLean is seconded. Super, okay, so with the mover and a seconder, can we screen that poll? And there we, I'll give everyone a moment to vote. I meant to screen that very long motion. Goodness, there's something wrong with this thing. Anyway, well, we, we have, everybody voted, a lot of people voted. Excellent, excellent. Okay, and I will call that carried. And I do believe that's our last poll, uh, our, our second last poll of the evening. So, um, so that motion is carried. And I thank you for that. So at this time, I'm going to call on Emily Power to present on behalf of the Environment Hamilton Nominating Committee. Emily, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Sydney. Cindy, um, I think I do have a slide if you want to proceed. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Emily and I'm a member of the board. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to join us for this meeting. And uh, this will be the last item on our agenda before we adjourn. So uh, I'll first provide an overview of the board of directors election process. Then I will share the list of candidates for this year and the individuals the nominations committee is recommending for election. Then I will pause to provide an opportunity for candidates to introduce themselves to you. Um, and finally, you will have the opportunity to vote for your choices. So as you may know, Environment Hamilton has a board of directors of nine people. Each director serves a two year term. The organization bylaws permit individuals to hold board positions for a maximum of three two year terms consecutively. And the terms of office are staggered so that only a handful of positions are scheduled to come up for renewal in a given year. Uh, this year, we're very sad to say goodbye 
to uh, board members Robin Cameron, Cindy Gangram, and Laura Ryan. Thank you very much for your years of service to the organization. The three directors that are not up for re-election tonight, since they have one year left in their terms, are Ron Valentine, Ryan McGreal, and myself. Board members Andy Coltman, Carrie LeClaire, and Christine Yachu are standing for re-election for another term. The Board Nominations Committee has the task of recruiting new people to fill the vacant positions of outgoing board members. The committee is composed of board members who are not up for re-election. We tried something different this year. We started the process earlier in advance of the AGM, circulated the call for applications broadly, and created a standard application form that we asked candidates to complete. We were delighted to receive applications from many excellent candidates, 14 people in total. So we'd like to recognize these people and thank them very much for uh, putting themselves forward. Uh, Amy Angelo, Stephanie Brash, Maria Golars, Leanne Greaves, Trish Johnstone, Eric Urien, Ferris McCly, Mish Monette, Laura Palumbo, Bonnie Pierce, Sonia Sansanwal, Nina Tran, and Alex Wilson. Their names, bios, and photographs were circulated to the membership ahead of the AGM for you to read. And we had a, a tough time um, making our selections, but um, we chose to recommend candidates who we feel can bring both professional skills and knowledge, experience, and perspectives to the board that we are currently lacking. So I wanted to share a little bit about each candidate that we are recommending to join the board by way of introducing them to you. First is uh, Amy Angelo. Amy works at Neighbor to Neighbor, a food security nonprofit in Hamilton that provides a food bank, community garden, and cooking classes. Amy lives in the Corktown neighborhood. She has a degree in ecology and evolutionary biology from Queen's University. She's interested in the overlap between food security and climate change. Uh, she's worked at Everdale and Black Creek Community Farm in Toronto as operations manager at Hamilton Victory Gardens, and most recently as manager of food access and skills at Neighbor to Neighbor. She is a member of the Hamilton Community Garden Networking Program and has connections with community gardeners and neighborhoods across the city. Amy would like to support Environment Hamilton in our efforts to advocate for more sustainable, participatory, and just urban planning in Hamilton. Amy brings the following skills to the board, human resources management, policy development, grant writing, volunteer recruitment, and public education. Second, uh, Leanne Greaves. Leanne is a postdoctoral fellow at McMaster University. She lives in the North End neighborhood. She is a biologist specializing in ecology and behavior with a focus on birds. Originally from Manitoba, she moved to Ontario in 2012 for her studies. She serves on the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee with the Society of Canadian Orthonologists and the Environmental and Ecological Planning Advisory Committee with the City of London. She volunteers with the Hamilton Naturalist Club and is part of a group dedicated to supporting Black, Indigenous, and people of color in nature by providing equipment, education, and mentorship. Leanne brings the following skills to the board, project management, fundraising, grant writing, and community organizing. Lastly, Nina Tran. Nina is a recent graduate of Westmount High School and an incoming engineering student at McMaster University. She lives on the West Mountain. Nina was one of four young people who sued the Canadian government for approving the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Nina was both a litigant and a fundraising lead in this effort, raising over $20,000. Nina volunteers with several youth and environmental initiatives, including Westmount High School Eco Ninjas, Fridays for Future Hamilton, and Climate Strike Canada. She has also served on the Hamilton School Board Student Senate, Mental Health Committee, and Faith Advisory Council. Nina helped organize Model City Hall Hamilton, empowering local youth to learn about the democratic process. 
Nina is also an experienced air cadet and flight sergeant with the local Black Down cadets. Nina brings the following skills to the board, event planning, marketing, volunteer recruitment, fundraising, and community organizing. So, uh, next slide. At this point, I'd like to invite any of the candidates uh, to give a short speech introducing themselves to the membership. So I believe we have three speakers, uh, Amy Angelo, followed by Leanne Greaves, followed by Eric Urian. So Amy, please go first. Hi everybody. Um, I think Emily did a, a lovely introduction, um, but I will also uh, maybe begin by saying that I um, have strong ties to Hamilton. My dad is um, from Hamilton. I've lived here for five years, but I spent a lot of time with my grandparents in Hamilton and a lot of time in Kings Forest. I grew up um, and I've spent every year of my life with the exception of one um, very close to the shores of Lake Ontario and, um, and literally playing in creeks that were tributaries. And I think that that uh, upbringing has, has um, contributed to all the work that I do in my life currently. Um, as mentioned, I work in food security and I'm very increasingly um, seeing the importance of the link between climate change and um, a loss of biodiversity and food security. Um, and I will also mention that I work with children in my role at Neighbor to Neighbor with doing cooking, gardening and nature exploration in one program. And that's a program that brings me a lot of meaning and fulfillment in my life. Um, again, I think because of the childhood connection that I mentioned earlier to nature. Um, I am worked a little bit with uh, Juby in the past uh, and I'm, I'm always um, inspired by the work that Environment Hamilton does. I would be honored to be um, elected to the board of directors. Thank you. Next we have Leanne. Hi there. Um, I hope my audio is working. I'm on an unstable Wi-Fi connection. I'm actually just doing field research right now at the Long Point uh, Bird Observatory uh, down by Port Rowan. Um, I'm a researcher in biology at McMaster University um, and uh, I work with birds both professionally and as a hobby. So um, I've recently moved back to Hamilton from London, Ontario, where I serve on the City Advisory Committee uh, for Environmental and Ecological Planning. Um, and so I would really look forward to bringing that experience to uh, Environment Hamilton. Um, and on a more personal uh, interest, I hope to advocate further for Hamilton to be a more bird-friendly uh, city through various environmental initiatives. Uh, such as retrofitting glass uh, window. Sorry, Leanne, I think you cut out and now you're muted. Oh, sorry. Um, is it on? Is the audio running again now? Yep. Okay. Was, was none of that audible? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, you were talking about uh, retrofitting buildings. Oh, I apologize. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. I, okay. It is the audio working now? Yes, your audio is working. Okay, I'll try without video. Um, I'm interested in advocating for uh, greater protections for migratory birds in the city of Hamilton. My screen's frozen, so I don't know if my audio is still working. I apologize. Still working, you're good. Okay. <laughs> um, 
such as retrofitting windows and perhaps ideally creating bylaws to reduce artificial light at night. Um, I hope my experience on EPAC would benefit Environment Hamilton. Um, and I would also look forward to engaging with the city of Hamilton in environmental advocacy uh, from, from a, an arm's length organization. Okay, um, it sounded like she was wrapping up, but it also cut out. Uh, lastly, we have Eric. Hi, uh, my name is Eric. I applied to be on the board because environmentalism is my passion. Over the last five years, I've been working on turning an old school bus into a sustainable tiny house so I can hopefully help educate people um, in sustainability. The bus is called Sustainabus. Um, I've recently gone back to McMaster to focus my education on sustainable public policy. I recently took a job at McMaster, starting up a new program called the Student Sustainability Ambassador Program. So uh, look out, that's gonna be coming out fairly soon. I have passed volunteer work with Environment Hamilton, um, Hamilton 350, and I do some work with the Royal Botanical Gardens. Um, I think I have a lot to offer the board, and I hope everyone is staying safe in these crazy times. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, Nina Tran also uh, wanted me to relay that she wanted to be here to give a speech, but she has a midterm this evening she couldn't get out of. Uh, so next slide, please, Cindy. Um, the formal bit of the presentation. On behalf of the committee, I nominate the following persons who have previously consented to act as directors of the corporation to hold office for one or two year terms or until their successors have been elected or appointed. Subject to the provisions of the bylaws, the Corporation and the Business Corporations Act of Ontario 1982, namely for re-election to the board, Andy Coltman, Carrie LeClaire, and Christine Yachu, and for election to the board, Amy Angelo, Leanne Greaves, and Nina Train. Next slide, please. So I think over to you, Cindy, actually, to um, propose that. Okay, thank you so much, Emily. Yes, you were right. So, um, well, Emily, I think that this, can, this motion can come from you, but I'll go ahead and read it. So we're looking to move to accept the report from the Environment Hamilton Board Nominations Committee, recommending the following people, as just stated by Emily, Andy Coltman, Carrie LeClaire, and Christine Yaku. Sorry, Cindy, you've uh, cut for out. re-election to the board. I think Emily might be muted. It's just uh, we're looking for a mover and a seconder. You froze in there, uh, Cindy. Oh, can you clearly now? Yeah, yeah. You're. It, it's a bit in and out a little bit. I'm getting the unstable message. Uh, which part did you miss? That did everybody miss, Laura? Um, you got about halfway through. I think we can read everything, though, right? Okay, so the motion is okay. screened. Emily's and I believe, do we have a seconder, Laura? Jim. Fantastic. So with that moved and seconded and the motion in front of you, there's the poll. So I'll just ask everybody to take a moment and vote. And, and we're just voting to accept the report for the board nomination from the nominating committee. Okay, I think we're good. There's, here are the results. Okay, so that motion is carried. So uh, the, the report from the nominating committee does stand. And at this time, I'd like to make a first call for any further nominations from the floor. If you can type it into the chat and someone will let me know. 
if there is anyone who is seeking nomination from the floor. And I'm going to make a second call for any nominations, further nominations from the floor. And now I'm going to make the third and final call. So looking to Robin and Laura, if there's anyone who's come forward, this is the third and final call for nominations from the floor. Okay. No, no nominations. So with no further nominations having been received by the secretary or from the floor, I now declare the nominations closed. So the membership is now going to have an opportunity to vote on the full list of candidates. And uh, I'm gonna hand it back to Emily to explain this process. Um, it's going to involve a link in the chat or... Yeah, Emily, I can... yeah go ahead. I'll, uh, before I post the link and you all scurry off and begin voting, I, I just like to explain the process um, just to make sure it's super crystal clear. Um, Next slide, please, Cindy. So we will shortly post a link in the chat for you to make your vote using a Google form. You'll be asked to provide your name, confirm your membership, and select six people for election. Next slide. There are six board seats to fill and 17 candidates, including the three people who are standing for re-election. So you need to select six people in total. Next. Note that you must scroll to the right to see all of the candidates. And you can only select one per person per seat. And you cannot vote for the same person more than once. If you are joining by phone and cannot complete the form, you can still participate. We ask that you email board, B-O-A-R-D, at environmenthamilton.org or call 905 Five four nine zero nine zero zero, which is the Environment Hamilton number, and give your list of six people. Please do so by 5 p.m. tomorrow, Tuesday, October 6th, and the results of the election will be determined on Wednesday, October 7th, and published on the Environment Hamilton website. So I will now post the link to the form in the chat. And Emily, go back to the slide so the people who are emailing can look at who the candidates are. Maybe the previous slide with all the names. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have also posted on the Environment Hamilton okay. website an overview of all the candidates. Um, okay. So if you go to environmenthamilton.org and then select, I believe it is about, and then board. You'll, you'll find that page. I, I knew I'd forgotten something. I think I was supposed to put a five minute timer in, but seeing as I forgot, the time is 8.37 right now. So we will do it till 8.42 before we resume the program.
So Emily, there's a question in the chat. Um, does everyone, even those using Google, the Google form have until tomorrow to vote? Uh, I guess technically, uh, but we would prefer if you could vote now. Um, if at all possible, it would make the process faster for us. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're deliberating and you want a little more time to read over all the um, biograph biographies of the candidates, uh, yeah, you would have until 5 p.m. tomorrow. Okay, thank you. And Cindy, after the voting, Ella Haley has her hand up in the chat as well. Okay, we're at 841. So in a moment when we return, um, I'll take the hand. Uh, if, if, if Ella's here now, I, I could take it now. She's just it's... typed in that it was an error. Okay, no There's problem. Question. But um, one of our people is having trouble scrolling to the right and made a mistake and can't seem to reverse it. Um, I would say to have the person put a second one in and where we notice the same, the name put in twice, we will delete the first one. Okay. So start over, Judy. And we will only accept the most recent entry. Yeah. And, and Judy, if you're having a lot of trouble with it, um, no rush. Like, you know, you have until tomorrow. So uh, don't, don't panic. <laughs> Emily, it's 8.42, should we give another minute? Uh, we have 29 responses of 52 participants, so yeah. Let's just make a nice round number and go until 8.45. Um, I see a hand up from Cherie. Go ahead, Cherie. Uh, type the question or ask out loud. If, oh, I guess you, you have to, you're muted. Sorry, Emily, I'm not seeing the question in the chat. Do you want to go ahead and re repeat it or, um, or it's a hand up, sorry. Yeah, I don't. Okay, the hand now. is gone away now. Lowered. But oh, hi, Shri. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Hi to Sean too. <laughs> Maybe that was their way of waving, Emily. <laughs> oh, Sherry's saying she didn't raise the hand. It must have been an error. I think there's glitches going on. There's ghosts in the Zoom. <laughs> it could be worse. I'll take ghosts. <laughs> I'm just glad they waited till we were almost done the meeting. Oh, we're 8.44, we're just gonna wait one more minute. Unless Emily tells yeah, Judy, I wonder if maybe you should try uh, calling in if it's not working for you. I'm sorry about the trouble, but it might be easier. Or emailing, whichever you prefer. Oh, thank you, Kathy, and to the same. 
try emailing or um, or calling in. So checking in again, we're at 8.45 and I'm looking to uh, my team here, my coordinating team. Should we continue or should we just wait a few more minutes? I, I do know that our responses are in the low 30s. I think we're good to move on. Yeah. Um, yeah anybody might... who hasn't had the chance to respond yet, um, yeah, please keep trying until tomorrow. And if, if you're having problems, uh, please email or call us. And with that. So as Emily mentioned before, the results of the election um, that you are, some of you are taking part in right now and some of you are going to complete after this meeting, uh, will be made, will be published and, and made available tomorrow, which is, uh, sorry, not tomorrow, Wednesday, October 7th. And uh, that will be available on the Environment Hamilton website. And I'm sure it will be sent out as well to the members. So if you receive the, the uh, email blasts that come from the office, you will receive that update when uh, those results are ready on Wednesday. Uh, okay. And uh, slide forward. Oh, it's because we're at the last slide. That's why I can't move it forward. Okay. So um, with that, yes, the results of the election ordinarily at a meeting would be known now, but given that they're not, we are leaving that portion hanging and we are coming to the end of our annual general meeting. And so now we're looking for our final motion, which is a motion to adjourn and uh, looking for a mover and a seconder on that motion to adjourn tonight's annual general meeting. If someone could monitor the chat, and let me know when I have a mover and a seconder. Jim Quinn moves to adjourn and Emily Powers seconds. Super. So we do have a mover and a seconder and there's the motion. So we're voting on a motion to adjourn tonight's Environment Hamilton annual general meeting for the 2020 year. Oh, we're at, well, it says we're at 100%. Yes, good, we're good. Super. Okay. And so with that being screened as, uh, as, as majority, yes, that's carried. And I can now say thank you so much for attending. The formal part of our meeting, our, our meeting that's happened virtually, is now adjourned. And thank you for your patience with us as we uh, muddle through the technology and attempt to make gatherings happen online. So thank you so much to all of you members. And remember, if you haven't already had time to vote, uh, you can do so over the next day. And if you haven't already had time to donate to the small change fund that information is available on the environment hamilton website as well <laughs> thank you bye everyone thank good you night. Everyone. Good night. thanks <laughs> good night good night bye bye <laughs> thank you guys Ha, <laughs>
my goodness. That was so funny when it kept flipping the old pole out there. <laughs> like it wasn't um, doing anything. Oh. And so Zoom does do funny things sometimes. This is still public and we still do have some participants. <laughs> <laughs> but <Very>. yes. <laughs> Uh, do you know who closes the recording or do you know if it just happens automatically? Is there anything I, I need to do? I can stop it right now. <laughs>